Hi, Jamie here, the Hedge Teacher. Let's look at how to budget successfully. It's one thing to decide you need to budget and another to execute it. Many out there will sit down and look at their expenses and bills and will come up with a plan that will allow them to continue to spend their money on things that are important to them or they will set goals that cannot be achieved. The best way to be really successful at budgeting is to take a multi-step approach and to stop making excuses or making serious budgeting mistakes. Do these in the right order and make it easier for yourself to have a successful budget in the future. Even before you set up your budget, you need to change your mindset. A lot of people think it is too difficult to budget and have a difficult time determining how this is going to help them in their lives. Some think <clears throat> they're too poor that things will work themselves out. You need to decide what you want your budget to do for you. Will it get rid of debt or make you more financially secure? Possibly it will help you buy a home to have money to buy things that you desire or for that dream vacation. Now get out your laptop or a piece of paper and write down five or more goals you want to accomplish in the next five years and then ten years like a home, a business or a family. Then write down three goals you want to achieve in 12 months maybe building your rainy day fund or paying off your debts or becoming an entrepreneur. And then what you want to accomplish in the next month, like getting your budget in order or to stop using your credit card and then being able to save a certain amount in this time. Now let's figure out how much you want to spend. Take note of all your expenses. You should be able to account for every penny you spend. That includes every coffee, snack, newspaper that you buy. Add these to the categories in your budget sheet and total the amounts. Check off your budget statements, your bank statements and make sure there have been no extra deductions that you are unaware of. So how do these measure up to your income? You can now plan your spending and limit your overspending. Also factor in expenses that don't occur every month like, like car servicing, things like that. When you have done your spending analysis, chances are you'll be shocked by the amount of money you have been spending and, and on what. Now rather than going cold turkey and cutting them out entirely, which can put you into a lifestyle shock, it's better to trim these expenses gradually and let yourself adjust to your new spending patterns, but not for too long. Now that you have your budget, let's create a savings category within it. As I mentioned in the rainy day fund, let's try to put away say 10, <coughs> excuse me, 10 to 15 percent of your income as savings, if it is attainable. It sounds like it's time to, you know, to cut back if you need to, or to look at ways to boost your income. A great way to save money is to set goals. Think of what you want to save for. You know, again, that vacation or the house. Figure out how long you need to save for it or them and your time frame. Short term goals can be your rainy day fund, six to eight months living expenses if something happens, a vacation or part payment for a car. Longer term goals, four years plus, your children's education, home, your home or, or a renovation project or for retirement. Deciding on your priorities will likely have the biggest impact on how you save money. After your expenses and income, the goals you set will give you a clear idea of where to start saving. Do not just think of these goals. Start a dream board. All the ideas you have, all the things you want. Find photos of these from magazines, papers. Cut them out, pin them or paste them to a board and have it so you can see it every day to help remind you of your goals. Bring in all your senses. Feel what it's like living there, being there. Hear the sounds. Taste the drinks and the food. The more you do this, the more real it becomes. 
Getting on track with a budget can take a month or two. You have lived all this time without one, so give yourself a little time to adjust. Don't be afraid to ask for help if things are not falling into place. But always be careful who you ask for information and who you can trust. Good financial management is hard work. It's a good to reward yourself for a job well done. So if you stay within your budget for a month, then you could treat yourself to a nice dinner. Or for three months, do something fun or, or take a day off. There are a number of apps available for you, you know, for this purpose. Or you can start by using the budget sheets I put together below. There is one other rule of thumb that is good for minimalist budgeting that I would like to share with you. That is the 50, 30, 20 rule. Especially good for those that are new into the workplace environment and just starting out paying bills on time. 50% of your after tax income to pay for your essentials, the absolute necessities in your life, like housing, food, uh, transport costs, utility bills. 30% on personal expenses. Many of these so called luxuries today are more mandatory than before as in your cell phone, your mobile plans, coffee, gym memberships, dinner out from time to time. The fewer costs you have in this category, the more progress you will make paying down your debt and securing your financial future. And 20% on savings and debt repayment. This part of the expenses should only be paid after your essentials are already taken care of and before you even think about anything in the personal spending category. Look at saving into something that will make you some money, or at least you, know, it doesn't, you don't lose money. These I've discussed in previous blogs and vlogs, and I'll go over again in the future. Now, we've talked about ways of saving money and the importance of knowing exactly where you and your spending and what you're spending it on. It's time to put this down on paper if you haven't all really, and really come to terms with what financial situation you are in. I said below are two budget sheets or you can get one of the multitude of apps available to help you to do this. Save them, these are, or print them out, make copies for yourselves and your friends or family and complete over the next three to six months. See where your hard earned money is going and look at ways to cut back so you can save money for your financial future, especially in these uncertain financial times. Don't keep this a secret. Like, share, subscribe. This with your friends and families. Because you know, we have to hedge our own future to look after ourselves and then be able to help and to teach others. Until next time, in wealth and wellness, this is Jamie at The Hedge Teacher.